All right. Hey, welcome back. Here we are, our first day of live streaming. Um, I'm Talon Wadsworth. I'm the lead designer for XD. Here, I'll be your host today, but I'm here with the talented uh, Christina Lee. Uh, joining us for the first time on stream today. Yes. Excellent. Welcome. Nice to be here. Thank nice you for having so me. great to have you here. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Christina. Um, so I'm Christine. I sorry. Oh my <laughs> it's okay. gosh. I respond I to like, Christina. I respond Christine, to Christine. I respond to Christine. you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's okay. I'm here. I am. I'm just like screwing it up. Like okay. I'm sorry, Christine. Christine. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Christine. I am currently a product designer at Evernote. Mm -hmm. um, I work on the web platform team there. Nice. And before that, I spent like a year and a half freelancing while traveling around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and then before that, I spent some time based out of Boston working with the team at Yesware yeah. um, to help design and build sales software. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. How's how's Evernote? What are, you guys are probably working on some cool stuff, I'm sure. Yeah, we, <laughs> we are working on some cool I'm stuff. Sure, I'm sure. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I've really enjoyed the team there. Nice. So what what it, what uh, what what just what kind of design are you into like generally? Like you, you do product design, but like are you, are you what do you you design anything in your free time? Do you do any Um in my free time I dabble a little bit here and there. Yeah. So sometimes I'll like venture into visual design. That's yeah. something that I haven't necessarily been strong at. Yeah. So it's yeah. something I've been trying to work on. Mm -hmm. Um so I've been doing that in my free time. Um other times I just like to draw little sketches in my sketchbook. I just get off the computer the and yeah, yeah, go analyze. Yeah, all right, so. everybody get off the computer. No, <laughs> sorry, don't do that. Stay with us. Hey, uh, chat, how are you? Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, Terrence, not much is up, just this is up. We're going to design some <laughs> cool stuff today. If you guys have any questions uh, for us, let us know here in the chat. If you have any questions about Adobe XD, again, you know, I've 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 worked on XD for a very long time now. I'm probably the the designer who's used XD the most. I can I can safely say that. I, I used it from way back, way back when some of the earliest builds I was designing full time <laughs> in XD. So uh, if you have a question for us, if you have a question for Christine, um, let us know. And we'll begin doing some really cool stuff today. Again, like the live, the Adobe Live team, they're just always like leveling this thing up. Um, we have a giveaway today. Uh, so in about half hour, uh, we're going to be giving away these lovely new, newly minted XD socks with the new icon. Oh, the we new had, icon. Yeah, we had because we had the old socks, which had the old square square corner. Mm. Again, I guess maybe if you if you're a square corner kind of person, <laughs> you might you might want the the the, the old socks. But yes. we have the new ones. We have the brand new ones. So I think they're much flashier. I like the contrast. I like the contrast yes. too, and the border radius is mm -hmm. nice. Very yeah. nice, good yeah. border radius. Mm -hmm. Not quite as maybe uh, geeky as the border radius on a iOS icons, right? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> but still, you know, a nice rounded Subtlety. border Subtlety radius. Subtlety. Yes. So yes, we'll be giving that away. So if you are here and you're chatting with us live on Behance, you're automatically entered uh, to to be uh, to to win a pair of socks today. So if you're watching us on YouTube, hop over to Behance, sign in there. Give us a comment. Just say hey in the chat on Behance, and you'll be automatically entered to win these lovely socks. So, excellent. All right. So, Christine, what are, what are, what are we going to be designing today? Yeah, so um, over the next three days, we'll be working on one experience, and mm -hmm. each day we'll be focusing on a new part of that experience. All right. All right. So, the kind of overall gist for what we'll be designing over the next three days yep. is... This is what you see on the screen here. <laughs> um, we'll be designing an experience that enables people to learn about the most popular beers from each country. Yeah. Um, so I just put together like a quick overview of what we'll cover each day. Um, this is all using XD2. So. Uh, you know, that's <laughs> um, secretly one of my favorite things to do with XD to make presentations. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Hidden feature. Yes. XD is great for making presentations. Um, and yeah, you don't have to deal with slides or anything. Um, but anyways, on day one, which is today, we'll be going over um, what the problem is, understanding why we're building this experience and why people might want to use it, um, and go into brainstorming some high-level approaches. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll focus on designing the core experience about learning how or learning about the most popular beers from each country. All right. Um, All right. But beer, that's a good motivation. Beer I think is generally, a good motivation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Cool. All right. Um, and then tomorrow we'll take a look at like the country experience. So maybe mm -hmm. if you're traveling to a new country, you want to learn about local drinking culture or etiquette. Um, so we'll be covering that. And then on the last day, 
we'll take a look at a nomination flow. So maybe users from those countries might want to nominate their local favorite, oh, their favorite yeah. local beer, yeah. um, because maybe I didn't choose the right one. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll enable them to um, share their tips and favorite beers. Excellent. That's, that's, that's a, that sounds like a really exciting project. I don't know if you saw on Twitter, I posted this really, I love, like, whenever I think of beer, <laughs> I think of Homer Simpson. Yes. So I had a great, if you check out my, uh, at Mr. Talon on Twitter, there's a great uh, sort of, uh, was Homer daydreaming about beer, which is always good. So, all right, that's a great topic. I'm very excited about that, and I'm sure you have some experience being the world traveler that you that you went on that. You're, you mentioned that you had kind of gone around, and I'm sure you have some hands-on experience with I some of these I'm beers. I think I'm well qualified. Nice. I tried a lot of beers. Yes, <laughs> so. yes. It's always good to have an expert in you know the topic that you want to design for, right? Uh, so, great. It's for all right, excellent, <laughs> excellent. So, how's everybody doing in the chat today? Uh, any questions? Uh, Jose, you could totally take it, make a resume in XD. That was, uh, you know, like, yeah, I'd give it a shot. I don't know about printing from it, but you could definitely like publish it online and like send people a link to your resume. That would mm, totally work. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. Uh, Anita, thanks for joining us. I'm glad you're starting to appreciate uh, kind of UX and the thinking behind there. If you have any questions about UX design, you have some experts here on hand today. So if you're new to UX design, uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Okay, so where do we wanna where do we wanna kick this off? Oh, well, actually before we get into that, let me yes. mention one more thing. We are having the daily challenge as well. I don't know if you know about this, if you participated before. That's where we give away prizes, right? Lose that one, but this one, we're actually gonna ask people to design with us in XD today. Oh, cool. So during our stream here, if you uh, we actually have a challenge going that if you uh, to design a recipe sharing app. And Gus from the amazing Adobe Live team has actually done some of that work for you already. He's created a templated kit uh, that you can download and just jump right in and customize it to design your own you know, recipe sharing app. So, and actually he's been using this amazing uh, UI kit um, that's up on Behance. Uh, you can find it if you download XD as well uh, to download like a wireframe UI kit. And it's a stellar, stellar kit. Um, it's like completely, just completely blown out, fully featured. And Gus has sort of took it, take the time. He's taking uh, some time, uh, pulled out a couple screens to help you get going on your recipe app. So today, if you design a recipe sharing app while we're here streaming, um, we'll be checking it out, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna judge the winner, and uh, you'll win a year Creative Cloud subscription at the end of our stream today if you participate and uh, submit a uh, a, um, a prototype through the challenge tab on Behance. So That's a good prize. Do that. Year. Yes, yes. Wow. So, so cool. All right. Okay. So let's get going. Let's let's kick this thing off. Day one, the core beer experience. All right. I like that. Core, the beer, core experience. beer experience. Um, so typically, when I get a design brief yeah. or start a new project, what I like to do is take all the information that's in here mm -hmm. and just kind of like dump it onto a piece of paper so yeah. that I can see everything in one view. Um, so that's kind of what we'll be going through today. Yeah. I don't know. Can we? We can. We can. Show this? I, th we, I think the the GoPro is set up here. Okay. What, is it? No. Yep. Paco. Yeah. Paco. Yeah. No, we're good. Okay. All right. Okay. So yes. So there we go. Okay. I don't know if this will <laughs> maybe the orientation correctly. might be a little weird, but yeah. yes. No. 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 I I've got. I also have my sketchbook. This is where a lot of a lot of my work starts right here too. So awesome. All right. Let's kick it off. Okay. So typically, what I like to do is I like to start off with some kind of brain mapping or mm -hmm. mind mapping, mm -hmm. um, and this enables you to see the relationships between the information that you have mm -hmm. and see where the gaps in your knowledge are. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I typically like to use printer paper like this because when I start mind mapping and then I think of more ideas and I just need room to like expand. Yeah, gotta... So anyone who's worked with me will know that my desk is just like a hot covered. mess. That's so. all right. <laughs> or, or like whiteboard's always good for this too, right? Yes. Like, like yes. you know, early on, again, you're really just thinking about the problem from a very high level. We're not diving into designs yet. Exactly. We're really just trying to get a good understanding of the problem we're trying to solve. Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, so what I like to start off with is the what. What are we designing? We're designing an experience that enables people to learn about the most popular beers from each country, right? Because we want to drink some good beer. We want to drink we some go. good beer. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, so all right. Learn about most. Ooh, I chose a bad sharpie. Oh no. Most popular beers from each country. So this is like the what? Yep. 
Ooh, it's actually mirroring pretty well. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> um, Man, these so... guys are pro. Gus and Paco, I gotta say, <laughs> the setup here in the studio. You guys are... Sorry, shout out. <laughs> um, so where I like to start after I have the what is who we're designing for. Yeah. Um, we should think about the users who are going to be using this platform. Mm -hmm. um, so this might be a traveler. Right. If you're yep. traveling to a new country, you want to learn about. Yeah, the you don't know beforehand. about the locals. Yeah, you know, you, you want some of that knowledge, right? That the locals have. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you might be a beer enthusiast who's just looking to discover new beers outside of your go original yeah. go-tos. Um, Could be the point of why you're traveling to go and try all these amazing beers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to host a around the world beer party. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> so I think you know, like yeah, party like. Host. Uh, yeah, I want to have a nice selection of the best beers from around the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely, particularly here in San Francisco, very foodie culture. Exactly. Like, yeah, the craft yeah. beer scene here is ridiculous. ridiculous. I can't even keep up. You know, there's a whole, there's a, there's a place in Oakland, if you're in Oakland, that's all Trappist beers. It's oh. just like hundreds of Trappist style beers from all over Europe. Uh, wow. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to the, go check that the out. The favorite old haunt, yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have the who, and as you can see, I did not plan properly. I'm already running out of space. <laughs> right. So I like to think of why these people might want to use it. Yep. Um, yep. So as we mentioned before, maybe the traveler wants to learn about a new culture, learn about local culture. Really immerse yourself in the in the in the local in mm -hmm. the local scene. Mm -hmm. um, the beer enthusiast might want to discover new beers. The party host might also want to discover new beers, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, and now that I just did this, one thing that you'll learn from these next three days with yeah, me is yeah. that design is a really messy process. Oh, it is. So, But you're really, I mean, this is exactly what, what you're doing. You're really trying to make connections, right? Exactly. You're trying to like, to have things bubble up to the top and maybe kind of form the foundation of the of the experience of the application we're gonna go build, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And like, I also like to use Sharpies or like permanent markers because mm -hmm. then it forces me to commit to my idea. Yeah. So that way I can No like mulligans, get no, it. no take backsies. No, yeah. no. <laughs> Everything is intentional. So yes. um, once it's on paper and I don't like the idea, I can just cross it off. Yeah. And at least I know that it's a bad idea that yeah. I have thought of and worked through. So. Um, that's just a little tip that I like to use. I, I once read a piece, and that kind of matches with what it said. Like, if you hang on to an idea and you don't write it down or you don't tell it to someone else and you kind of like let it go, it takes up space in your brain. Exactly. Right? That, that yeah. thought, like, let it out. Like, all the weird ideas, mm -hmm. you know, just like put it out there because then that kind of frees up your mind to think of new ideas. Right. Yes. Like when you're later on in the process designing high fidelity screens and you're like, oh, wait, but I had this one idea that I never like explored. It's a little bit too late yeah, at that stage. Yeah, so totally. just get it out here, um, work through it. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. we have the who, we have the why they want to learn about it. Um, we should also consider what experience we want to create. So is it a mobile platform? Is it a desktop platform? Mm -hmm. Are these, like the traveler might be on the go. Yeah, I'm on my phone, right? Like, yeah, that's why I don't take my laptop with me because, uh, you know, Hello. like this, this this has everything I need when I'm traveling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah and totally. And um, okay, this is going to be really <laughs> messy. <laughs> We're going to go over here. Um, so the traveler, there's like pre-travel when you're doing the research, mm -hmm. right? There's post-travel and then there's during the travel. Mm -hmm. So during the travel, you actually might want to use mobile because mm -hmm. you're on the go. Yeah. Um, pre-travel, you might want to use desktop and post, you might want to use both of these. Mm -hmm. um, and actually to stick, to make things a little bit easier, let's just stick with the traveler for now. Definitely. We can like consider these two later on, but I think this will be our core person. Yeah. I'm a I'm a traveling beer enthusiast. We'll just combine them together. Exactly. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, there are a few questions here yes. uh, in the chat. Let's let us know. Um, again, uh, today we're going to be creating a click through version prototype uh, in you know in in XD. Uh, of our mobile app, maybe mobile you know, web service. Um, and actually, you can embed that prototype inside your Behance uh, project as um, Sander. Is that, did I get it correctly? So, yep, had, had asked. So, oh, cool. so that's kind of a cool unknown feature not a lot of people have used before. You can actually, now once you create your beer app, you can actually embed it in a, in a Behance project. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So, I will uh, do that. Today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a great, that's a great point. So, 
Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, definitely let us know. Again, we're working through a process here. If you have any questions about the process, kind of where we're headed, let us know. And uh, remember, we are going to be giving away some socks here in about 15 minutes. So say hi in chat, in the Behance chat, and you'll be, I'll be automatically entered. All right, cool. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, um, so we've got our traveling beer enthusiast. Yes. Who probably has their mobile device with them a lot yep. of the times. Right. Um, and to simplify things even further, so I think in most normal cases, you would have a PM to help, like, think through some of the strategic mm -hmm. stuff. Do some you? customer validation or yeah. research. Yep, exactly. definitely, definitely. Um, and make sure that there's a need for this in the market. Yeah. But today I'll be the PM and I'll be like, <laughs> we're going to focus on the traveler and we're going to focus on this desktop experience. So before people go traveling, yeah. maybe they want to do some research and just browse around. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll help like consolidate with, and prioritize. Yeah. Well, even without a PM, like we can say like there's there's a market for beer uh, enthusiasts. I, I gotta say there's that niche out there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go with it. <laughs> we'll be our own PMs today. Okay. So um, I'll just like mark that here. Uh, <laughs> the little smiley face. It's very technical. Very nice. That's um, all right. Okay. So we have the traveler who's going to be looking on the desktop. What are the core things that they want to be able to do in this experience? Mm -hmm. Obviously, they want to learn about the most popular beer. Mm -hmm. What exactly about that beer do they want to know? So maybe they want to know, let's just write down beer info. Beer info, so maybe you want to know the name of the beer. Mm -hmm. What country it's from? Yeah, or maybe like region. Like it could, it could also be like a, you know, like a, like a broader region sort of take on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, maybe some basic stats like ABV, alcohol by volume, IBU, which is like the bitterness of the beer. Mm -hmm. um, style, like whether it's a lager or ale. Trappist or Trappist. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, and maybe some like basic information about why that beer is important or yeah. like a story about oh, the story. The history. I mean, that, that's what really sells it, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe even the you know, packaging sells pretty well too. So maybe even a picture. Yes, right? a picture. Go. That's important. Yep. You want to know what you're drinking, yeah. right? Uh, just a note here, there's a, Anita is worried that she won't have the time to get the challenge done. Hey, Gus has done a ton of work on the DLB Live team to actually get you going, going to give you a jump start today. So if you download uh, a template for the recipe sharing app, you'll get going, you'll, you'll be up and going in no time. So Anita, even if you've got, you know, like 15 minutes, I bet you can design something <laughs> in XD and submit it for the challenge. So just, just, just a note. And XD is super fast. Like yeah. once you have your base screens, um, you can just copy paste. You can create drag and symbols. drop. Yeah. It's super easy. Global colors. Yeah, yeah, the whole deal. Yeah, yeah. All right. So give it a shot. Excited to yep. see your submissions. Yes, indeed. <laughs> all right. Okay. So I think we have enough to go here. Obviously, I could go all day with this, oh, yeah, but yeah. we don't have all Get day. Get really deep into the beer geekiness, and yeah, for exactly. sure. Exactly. Um, so I think we have enough to actually start sketching some yeah. key flows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, specifically around how are people going to get to this site, learn about the beer, and then get into this beer info. So that's yeah. kind of the overall. Yeah, definitely. Flow. I mean, I always and I really like like uh, I, I start with the why a lot in my own process because I really want to kind of understand like what it why do people want to use this app? What are they here to do? What can we what can we do that's unique or very in, it could be really interesting for them, really valuable for them, right? And I exactly. always feel like it starts with the why. Like we could design any number of features or cool filters or searches, but really like. If we focus on the why, that can really let the things that are important really bubble to the top, right? And that's a framework that I like to use a lot yeah. is the five whys. Yep. So if you ever get stuck after the what and you don't know where to go from there, mm -hmm. just keep asking why over and over again. Yeah. So like you have the traveler, why do they want to use this app? Oh, they want to learn about local culture. Why do they want to learn about local culture? They want to connect with the people. Why mm -hmm. do they want to connect with people? To create meaningful experiences. Oh, and so, so you yeah. just like get to the meaning of life after uh, asking why five <laughs> no, times. Definitely, definitely. But I, I like I like that learn about local culture. And I think that, you know, like using that as a framing for, you know, all the all the possible information we might uh, share could could give us some hierarchy, start creating some structure, right, in that page. Like we want to, if we, if learning about the culture is part of that, like some of the things about uh, maybe the style, the country, uh, in the about, really start to, you know, start to become more important in telling that story and helping people really get to that that cultural learning quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now that you mention it, this is a little bit of a preview for day two, but maybe people want to learn about um, local etiquette. 
when it comes to drinking. So ah. that's like a way to learn about local culture. And this nice. is also connected to the country. Love it. So, as you can see, you this go. is kind of a hot mess, but this is how I work through it's like, my idea. Know, <laughs> putting your brain just out there on the paper, really helping you see it and then analyze it at a high level. So exactly. great, great. Okay. All right. So now that we have this, We'll move on to sketching some key screens yeah. and key flows. Right. That sounds great. Um, are right. there any questions? Any questions? Do you guys, do you guys sketch, do that, that sketching before you start your process? Um, or you guys jump right into the tool? I know like sometimes time is tight, but like I know, you know, the, the earlier you can start, start thinking about, start diagramming, start working out those problems earlier in the process, that means that you'll, you'll be able to make decisions faster and be set up much more for success in the next phase of your project. So right. I always like sketching. And it's this is such a cheap it. way too. Like yeah. if you make a mistake, just cross it out and yeah. go on to the next. Doesn't page. have to be perfect. You know, exactly. We're not, we're not focused on the design details quite yet. So, um, yeah, welcome to the stream, everyone who's just joining us. Be sure to say hi in the Behance chat to be entered in to win this lovely pair of new, newly minted XD socks with the new, the new icon on it, the official 1.0 icon. Um, and be sure to check out our daily challenge. Um, we're going to create a recipe sharing app while we're here on the stream with us today and uh, submit it through the challenge tab on the, the Behance chat and we'll be choosing a winner later for a year Creative Cloud subscription. So be sure to be doing <laughs> that. Said, hi, socks. Hi, socks. <laughs> socks, yes, yeah, socks. I'm excited about socks. <laughs> these socks are great. They're essential. I don't have these. I, I actually don't have a pair of these yet myself. These are oh. like seriously just, just arrived. Are so. you allowed to enter the challenge too? Ah, uh, no. I think it's a conflict <laughs> of interest, right? Oh. No. But I, I know I know a guy. I know a guy. You know a guy. Chris, That's good. Yeah, Christine, if you want some socks, do you want to make sure you get <laughs> <Okay>. some socks? So. <laughs> we don't have to enter. All right. <laughs> All right, let's get sketching. Hey, okay. oh, Zilla. I got to shout out to Zilla. Robert Generati the third. Zilla, you know him and love him from the from the live streams here. Amazing illustrator. Friend of mine. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what's up, Zilla? Um, yeah, be sure to catch his stream next time he's on. That dude is a wizard. I will. Yeah. I need to learn more about illustrations anyways. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so to get started, um, I just like to draw a bunch of boxes. Mm -hmm. It's an easy way to start. Yeah. And there's nothing more intimidating than a blank sheet of paper. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> you gotta start. Some, you gotta easy. have like the boxes. At least it gives you a framing, like some kind of frame, right, to start with. Like exactly. the blank canvas is. Actually, that's actually why we we put the presets into XD, and when you start the start screen, oh yeah. Like, it, actually, there's there's a there's a camp of designers who are the the real pros mm -hmm. who just love starting with a just an infinite blank document. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. I mean, we'll help you guys out, but but the 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 uh, the, at, the the device presets we actually put in there just to give people a starting point, to give mm -hmm. them some reference, particularly if they they never designed before. Like I think you know, like in are we designing for mobile? We're designing for web. Exactly. Just giving giving users a real clear call to action to start to start there, and, and start yeah. with an artboard of that size. Like just just help people again. Just just be more successful in the long run. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And like even when I'm sketching in my sketchbook, it's so intimidating. So I'll just make little marks like that mm -hmm. or on a piece of paper. So I. Not afraid to like commit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's ruined. It's I don't ruined. have to. Dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just fine. keep doing this all over and over. There's a little again. bit of wabi sabi kind of happening in that in that ethos right there. Wabi sabi. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. The, what the, is that? The, the, it's a Japanese uh, sort of I don't know, ethos you could call it. Uh -huh. But basically, that the small imperfections or just the small things that are out of line in something that, that overall is very perfect actually enhances its beauty. Oh. That's a good ethos go. to live by. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very nice. So small imperfections make the rest more beautiful. <laughs> All right. So um, as we mentioned before in the mind map, we're going to be designing a desktop experience. So I'll just say desktop. Web experience, right? Oh, desktop yeah, web, web, sorry. Yep. yep. And we're going to be learn about uh, popular beers. Yep. So there's a couple different ways we could go about this. Um, one is to maybe like when the user first comes to this site, they might see a list of countries, mm -hmm. right? And then you click into a country name mm -hmm. to then see like information about the country, country information, 
Maybe there's like a featured beer here. Mm -hmm. in the I was gonna say when, when the beers start coming into this equation. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe you have like a beer picture, and then you have like the header and some information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe another way to approach this is having like some kind of. This is my uh, world map. I like the world map. <laughs> I was just thinking. The world map. It's Australia and New Zealand. There you go, down there. <laughs> Here's South America. As long, as long as you know what it is, we're, we're good. We're solid. Exactly. <laughs> this is a map. Um, in case you don't know, I'll just say map here. <laughs> um, and maybe, you know, you want to hover over a certain country. Mm -hmm. So if you hover over a country, it'll mm -hmm. like highlight that state. whole, yeah, that whole country or region. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. you can go back into this like country view, which will then take you to this beer mm -hmm. app. Or maybe if you click directly into the country, it'll take you straight to the beer. Mm. Uh, this actually reminds me when I was in <laughs> seventh grade, uh, the final of our geography class mm. was to draw the world without a map next to us and label as that many countries so as we could. It was it was intense. I still I think I still have it. <laughs> it was that important. Die. Actually, Sorry, that's one tangent. of my favorite things to do is playing countries of the world quiz. It sounds super mm -hmm. nerdy, but yeah. like you just name as many countries as you can think of off the top of your head in 15 minutes, and it's surprisingly hard. Yes, um, I, I, yeah. So, yeah. Right. So, do you think, so, you know, going back to our why here mm -hmm. and our focus on like a beer story. Yeah. yeah. Where do we start? Like, in like, like, do we start bringing the beer in at, at this level, mm -hmm. right? How do we maybe is the lens that we go through like about actually about the beers, or is it about the countries? I mean, that's this is a actually, good question. Yeah, that's another good approach. Yeah. Let's just um, write that out here. So that's another thought that I had. Maybe you have the landing page be the beers, and then you just have like a bunch of features, or maybe it's filtered by like beer types, mm -hmm, yeah. so yeah. then you have like beers listed like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. um, the reason why I think a map might be more yeah, interactive yeah. is because we're focusing on the travel. The travel, that, that, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But this this definitely is something that could, could we could lead you there, like through exactly. the different regions. Yeah, 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 yeah so sure. this could, maybe it could also be a toggle. Maybe like you want to have a map view or a list view. Mm -hmm. And so this would be the map view, and then if you go to the list view, it'll look something like that. Yeah, 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 or yeah, beer. Yeah, interesting. Or or this one, or yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. So All there's right. a couple we'll different get some ways options. you can approach. Definitely, definitely. Map, definitely. You know, visual. I'm a traveler. That feels like the right orientation for me, to, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Sakata. Thanks for saying hi. <laughs> Everyone who says hi in the Behance chat gets entered in to win some socks. So remember nice. that. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, we've got some. We got some support for the map idea from Ryan. Yep. There you go, interaction. Yeah, we're very looking for that. Of course, we have to think about how it would work on mobile eventually. But again, we're always yes. kind of keeping that in the back of our head. You know, you might have the mouse interactions on the desktop. Mm -hmm. What's this gonna look like on mobile? But just, and that's just always a good question too, because maybe on mobile, because people are traveling mm -hmm. around and they're doing it during the travel rather than before the travel, mm -hmm. um, that might warrant a different experience altogether. Yeah, so maybe right. you don't even need the map in the mobile. We already, version. you already know where you are. Your yeah. your phone knows where you are. Exactly. Everybody's tracking you, as we know now. So <laughs> maybe we go straight to the country page, or Damn, launch you you straight go. into the beer. Nice. page. Nice. I like it. Okay. Well, we'll kind of keep that in the back of our heads yes. as we move forward. All right. I like that. Cool. Yep. Um, so, I think, let me just clean this up here. <laughs> <laughs> this All is right. a little messy. So, Get our plan. the flow is we land on the page. Also, if you have a good name idea for this app, let me know. I'm just going to name it something like Beers of the World. As, as I've spoken about before and told many stories around, naming can be very important. Naming of whatever your app, your feature, mm -hmm. they can really catch fire. And really can. take on a life of its own. And I'm really bad at naming. I mean, I name like my folders on my desktop yeah. stuff or <laughs> lulls or like <laughs> stupid things. Okay, then like we that. chat. We need your help. We need a name so. for our beer discovery app, our, our world traveler beer discovery app. Yes. So, all right, get on it. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, oh it's giveaway oh. time. Wow, that came out of nowhere. Here we go. <laughs> uh, okay, this is your last, last second. If you said hi in the chat, we're gonna pick our randomly generated winner right now for the brand new, newly minted, fresh off the presses or uh, looms or mm. whatever. Yes, for the for the XD socks. Okay, I think Gus is gonna do it here. <laughs> He's gonna draw in one, one minute. minute. All right, all right. There we go. Everybody, chat's going crazy. <laughs> socks. 
Yes. The golden Excellent. prize. <laughs> <laughs> of course, then all the people who were like actually like, you know, submitting names, like they're gone. That's the thing about chat, right? Like it's just like <laughs> if you don't see it, it didn't happen. <laughs> so yes. All right. The chat uh, is going crazy. The socks are I love popular. This. Yes. <laughs> the beer is also uh, uh, that is an acceptable response too. <laughs> to, <laughs> Right, but so I don't think multiple multiple mentions get uh, get extra things. Okay, we have a winner, <laughs> Carolina Markin. Carolina Markin, who joined us here on the Behance chat, wins a pair of the 1.0 Icon edition of the XD socks. Congratulations! Congratulations. <laughs> Excellent. Look at that. See, it just it pays to be chatting with us here today in the chat on Behance. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Christina, Carolina, sorry. Oh my gosh. So many C's. I have, it's because I, I talked to Christina earlier today. That's what's uh, going on. All right. So, uh, Carolina will be keeping her feet warm in these very fashionable XD socks. Wear them proudly. Um, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, don't forget our challenge today challenge designing a recipe sharing app. Um, there you'll see the challenge tab in the chat on Behance. Uh, we have a really great template built from the the amazing wire uh, wires wireframing UI kit um, that's on Behance, and uh, just go in there and drag and drop, start customizing it, and build your own recipe sharing app, uh, and then submit it through the form, and uh, we'll be judging that later uh, later on. We'll take a look at some in about maybe about 15, 20 minutes or so. Okay. All right. Excellent. Cool. cool. All, right, All right. So let's just clean up this flow because okay. this is a little hard to follow. Okay. We're gonna start with the map. And then we're going to go to like a map hover state because we're on desktop. And then we're going to land on the beer page. Excellent. Beer. So that's what we're going to be wireframing. All right. All right. Wireframing. Uh, last week on actually uh, my new show on Fridays, uh, Designing Adobe XD, we talked about wireframing. And we actually did some wireframing uh, in XD. We talked about the importance of it. Oh, so, cool. you know, uh, Christine, tell me, so why wireframing? Tell us about this, this phase of the project. What, like, what, what does this help you do in your, in your process, the wireframing stage? Um, I think for me, wireframing helps not only clean up the sketches that I have, yeah. but it also brings like a higher level of fidelity to the prototype that mm -hmm. I want to create. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really good for sharing with stakeholders. Like mm. if you have an initial concept that you want to test yeah. with, maybe your leadership team or yeah. your development team and just let them know what you're thinking. Mm. This is a polished way to do that. Yeah. What kind of problems are you solving as you're kind of keeping this very like high level sort of concept starting to sketch it now in in the application start wireframing? Like what kind of what kind of design problems are you working out? Yeah, for me personally, I use wireframes to work through the interactions mm -hmm. as well as to understand what content is going to end yeah. up in my app. Right. So, you know, as I'm like creating these screens, um, maybe I find that I need like a search bar or maybe I find that I need a certain component mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or I'm missing a whole part of the flow altogether. Yeah. So wireframing is a really great way to see all of the screens connected yeah. um, and just kind of work through that process. Wow. Great. Let's let's dive into it. Oh, man, we've got some really great uh, names popping up here in the chat. Beer huggers. Beer hug. <laughs> Beer on the go. <laughs> Hip hops. World's Hip popular hops. beers. I like that's, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, beer versity, diversity in beer. Nice. Beer hopper, also that that's also good. Around the beer, beer <laughs> brain, ale atlas. Hmm. Yeah, ale atlas. Uh, uh, good. Good. We need, we need some more puns. Can we get some? We need some puns. Some <laughs> beer puns. Who's got it for us? Like, do you, do you watch uh, Bob's Burgers on on Fox, that animated show? No, but all I've right, heard of all it. Right. <laughs> Every like it's kind of a thing in the show that they have like a like a good like the burger of the day is always mm -hmm. like a really good pun. Mm. Nah, good. Yeah, earlier yeah. today um, in the live stream, they they were coming up with some good puns for that. Yeah, app, that so. was, yeah. that's always good. Very yeah. catchy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hip hop's pretty hip hop's I like interesting. Hip -hops, yeah. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay, well, Beer we'll hopper. keep keep thinking about it. Maybe we'll do a, a quick vote, like an informal sort of vote here in the chat. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Cool. Um, so. Oh, so here you are oh, in XD. Did you download the update today? I did download um, the update. Excellent. I'm Do you guys, updated. does everyone update. know about the update today? We just added some, some, some great new features. You can now put a password on your prototype as you're sharing it. Oh. So then you can send that password to your stakeholders or whoever's going to be reviewing it so only they can see it. 
very highly requested feature in our user voice forum um, where people can vote, uh, submit new feature ideas and vote. Um, we also have some really great uh, enhancements to the assets panel. So now when you start building all those global assets and styles, uh, you can actually see and highlight them on canvas. Mm. So if you have a color and you're like, where if I use this color, you can actually you know, right click on it and actually it'll show you on canvas. It'll actually highlight where that color is in use on the canvas. That's so really cool. a really useful all right, feature. All right. Maybe we'll run into some of those new features as cool. we're working today. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Um, so as Talon mentioned before, when you first open XD, you see this little window. Mm -hmm. uh, makes it super easy for you to get started. So we go. know we're starting with web. web. All right. It's easy. Just click on it, and you're you're in web. Uh, <laughs> so um, the first thing I like to do is just take a look at the screens that I quickly sketched out. Mm -hmm. So I have three different screens, mm -hmm. um, and just create those here. Nice. So I'll do one, two, three, and then I'll just label them super quickly. So. This one, Web 1920, I'm going to rename to Map Home. Okay. This one is going to be Map, oops, Map Hover. And this one is going to be um, Beer Details. Nice. You're much more organized than I am. My files, I'm really bad at naming. <laughs> oh, I am too. Um, you'll, you'll see it'll. Really so this is this is just for the things. chat today. This is, yeah. this is best practices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing good etiquette just for yes. you guys, but <laughs> normally nice. this wouldn't be happening. <laughs> Love it. Uh, let's actually save this file too, so we know what we're doing. Narendra, I like that. Beer me. Beer me. Beer me. <laughs> Beer me. Very nice. The world. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first thing I like to do is just like. Think of blocks. So mm -hmm. I know that on this map home, I need a map block. So I'll just draw a big rectangle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I like to use shades of gray. Mm -hmm. Keep it very abstract. Yeah. Yep. Don't, say, don't dive into map. those details too soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and just blow this up so we know what it is. Let me make that black. Um, oops. And then. We have the map, mm -hmm. and then we have the map hover. Good enough. And then for the beer details page, we probably have like an image. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna start blocking in like the the content that's gonna be on this on this page. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And then we probably want to have the beer name here. Mm -hmm. Oops. Fifty shades of beer. Fifty shades What's your take of on beer. That? <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> uh, Chris, yes, actually, we XD is for UI and UX design, and if you were doing that in Photoshop, we now actually have a way to actually import and actually bring in your Photoshop file into XD, uh, plus some other cool Photoshop workflows that I myself use uh, if you're a Creative Cloud Libraries user. Um, but yes, yeah, so XD is for all UI, UX, um, from wireframing all the way to your finished design. Uh, sharing that with your developer. So, yep. Well, you know, like uh, Photoshop has can do a ton of things. Um, but, uh, you know, Chris was uh, kind of mentioning, you know, Photoshop versus XD. Uh, and Photoshop really should be good for, you know, uh, what you want to do in Photoshop. And, and again, XD is really focused on being fast, um, you know, getting up and going and making an interactive prototype. That's probably the big one, the big difference is, you know, XD is for making an interactive prototype. But if you are a Photoshop user and you can bring in those assets to really enhance your mobile prototype in XD. So I think they fit pretty well together. Mm. You know, so. Um, Brewster, Brewster, that's, that's, that's a pretty good name, Simone. Simon, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, me and names today, I don't know what's going on. Um, uh, so many good names out there. How are yeah. we going to choose? Yeah, I know. I know. We're going to let the chat do it for us. I think we're going to let them vote later. Um, yeah, Chris, you know, talking about like bringing XD prototypes into Photoshop, I'd love to like follow up maybe a little little further on that. Uh, you know, XD is intended to go really high fidelity. Again, we're wireframing here, but we're going to build, on, Christine is going to build on this wireframe to get to a more finished uh, high fidelity concept. But again, I think the goal of wireframing, as Christine was talking about, was really solving some of these big problems before we start diving into the details. Um, so from this wireframe, 
Christine's going to start kind of mapping some of those interactions, uh, kind of the, you know, the user experience, and then from there, going to keep enhancing it and moving from this, this wireframe. Uh, XD makes it really easy to move from a wireframe to a very, it's a very high fidelity uh, comp mm -hmm. here in XD. Um, so what I did here was I just quickly mapped out the content, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. Yep. Um, and the cool thing here is that you can start to save some of these um, like text styles. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing that I like to do in wireframing is making sure that like it doesn't have to be pixel perfect, but I like to get the hierarchy set up. Mm -hmm. So like here, this might be my H1, this might be my H2, this might be my H3s. Yeah. So I'll just quickly add these to this asset panel. Mm -hmm. Um, and this will make it super easy once we move into high fidelity. We'll just change it in the asset panel and it'll apply change to everywhere. Screens. It's That's, so easy. I live with this panel open, I feel like, whenever yeah, I'm designing. It's, yeah, okay. Yeah. So let's just click add. That's all you need to do is click this add button. So easy. Yep, look at that. <laughs> you got your different sizes. You already have three. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the next and thing I like to. Soon you'll be able to name those. <gasps> just, I'm just. I've been waiting for that. Saying, <laughs> it's coming. Soonish. I won't say exactly. I can't say exactly when, but it's actively in development. Awesome. And um, yeah, so you'll be able to go. This is my H1. This is my H2. This is my body copy. So that's super. Exciting. Stay tuned. Cool. <laughs> um, and then what I like to do from here is just quickly go into prototyping. So there's a nice little handy prototype tab. Mm, yes. Um, and then all you need to do is just connect the screens. So on hover. There actually isn't a rollover effect, right? Not Let's yet. See. Not yet. Definitely coming. We're definitely something we are we are working towards to enhancing this prototyping. Uh -huh. Much more to come there. Okay. Very exciting things. Maybe I can show you later. Ooh, okay. Not cool. on stream. Sorry, stream. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, we can use um, clicked and then dissolve to show hover. Yep. Um, and then once you click on a country, maybe you want to. We can slide, push left. We'll try it out. We'll, we'll see how out. that feels. Yeah, see how it goes. Again, we're just really storytelling at this at this high level. We're just trying to work out the the, the skeleton. Someone put that that the other the other day when we were on the on the stream. We we're talking about wireframing. This is really your skeleton of your site. Exactly. Your wireframe is really a skeleton. And over time, you're going to start adding more detail, more musculature, as it were, if you want to follow that that uh, that uh, analogy a little further. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Cool. Skeleton, skeleton. of our site. Very nice. Um, so what's super cool is you can just actually prototype and view the prototype from within the app, mm -hmm. and it's so fast. So here the user comes to the website, they see a map, they might hover over a certain country, mm -hmm. and then clicking into a country, you'll see this beer image with the beer details. Nice. Um, nice. And so this is kind of the flow. Mm -hmm. um, now we probably want to add some visuals yes, to it. Yes, very important. So let's do that. I think the map's going to be really to important, design. right? To have like at least some some stand in for that for that map. Yep. Yep. Oops. Yep. Welcome to the chat, everyone. If you're just joining us, uh, you should be joining our daily challenge. We're going to be giving away a year Creative Cloud subscription uh, if you design a recipe sharing app with us today. On while we're here on stream, um, we actually we have a great starting place. We have a template built from our wireframing UI kit. And it can get you going and kind of help you really just, you can just kind of drag and drop and customize the the template and then share your recipe sharing app, a prototype of your recipe sharing app with us uh, through the challenge tab on the Behance chat. And then in a little bit, uh, Christine and I will be checking out uh, some of your submissions and then we'll be uh, judging a winner at the end of their stream today. So definitely be taking part in that. So. Uh, I still beer me is still like my dark horse favorite here in beer the in, me? beer me. I think that's beer already me. taken. Ah, oh, I know. I, I, know. I was okay. doing some research earlier on, and I think beer me. Might See, you're doing your job. <laughs> you're doing your job. Doing sorry, some... it is a really good name though. Yeah. I thought of yeah doing that. <laughs> All right, too. sorry, I forgot who mentioned who suggested beer me. Uh, we we'll have to do something else. Super again, catchy. We, we can't be. We can't. You know, you got to do your competitive research. It's yes. important. No, it's out there. Don't. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, okay, so right now I'm in Adobe Stock, and the nice thing is I don't have to create the map from scratch. I can just come in here, and I just search for a world map. Um, the nice thing is you can also view filters. Mm -hmm. So if I want to look for vectors, if I need to like have it scale, or mm -hmm. if I want to make sure that it's um, going to display correctly at all resolutions, vector is a really nice yeah. format to have. Oh, Destiny has a really good one. Yes. Globe hoppers. Globe hoppers. That's that's pretty good. That's catchy. Destiny. I like that. Yeah. Mm, very good. Okay. 
Cool. Right. Um, and then, you know, you can take some time browsing through these different maps and add them to your library. So let's say that you like this one. You can just um, save a preview to your computer. You can save it to a library within Adobe Stock. So what I've done is I've actually gone in here and created a Beers of the World library. Excellent. And just browsed a bunch of pictures that I liked. Um, so I have a couple maps here that I've already downloaded to my computer. Oh, great. So um, what we'll do is we'll go back into XD. I have those here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just drag this in. Oops, can I not do that? Not into a shape. You can drag it onto the canvas and then replace that shape. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah. I'll just do that. Oh, actually, this is an AI yeah. file. What the? Oh. Let's open it. Actually, do one thing real quick. Uh -huh. Go here. Go to File. Go to Creative Cloud Libraries. Creative Cloud Libraries. There you go. Oh. There it is. And we just added support again, like the Creative Cloud Libraries. If you're a user of Creative Cloud Libraries, we have it in XD. And if you have assets in there, drag and drop them onto the canvas. Oh, that's so easy. And this is a vector. Uh, um, this is actually linked to that AI file now. Mm-hmm. That you've uh, you have there, and the preview will come in here. There you go. Nice. So now, and then if you go back into Illustrator and you update that, then it'll actually then update automatically here in your XD file. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Is pretty there a good, way to pretty good tip? Um, filter by like only show the ones that are licensed. Not yet. That's that, again like it's a little you know we we we're uh, this is we're building all you know XD kind of from from scratch, and so right now we are going to be adding more features to that to that window. But look, there we go. Found and see it's linked. It's got licensed. a little it's got a little icon on it. So it shows that now if you go and oh I think I unlinked it. Do an oh. undo real quick. There you go. So <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> a little touchy. Um, so yeah so if you do have if you use Creative Cloud libraries you can drag all that all those assets into XD and place them in your design file and then if you update them in the source in the and the Illustrator file or the Photoshop file they'll automatically update in your XD file. Cool. Look at Good that. Pro tip. All right. So if you guys have any questions about XD, also, you feel free to ask us or about design in general. Let us know here in the chat. So, as we're building out our site, our Fifty Shades of Beer, <laughs> no, our <laughs> hip hop. Globe app. hoppers. Globe, ho like globe hoppers. Globe hoppers oh, is super catchy. And that just that just feels that just feels pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I have the map. I just blew it up a little to fit the size. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned that I can open you, this in Adobe. You can open Illustrator. it up. In, so go uh, to, to the library's window. Right click on those. Edit. Edit. So it's going to launch Illustrator. Oh, I'm so going to be able to edit something it. New today too. I know. Look at that. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I'm here to help. Uh, I'm at your service. Um, Okay. Ryan, yes, if you uh, you can drop that asset into a mask, so that linked asset can then be in a mask inside XD, and you can scale it up, um, or you can go into the original to the original and start scaling things up, um, as we are doing kind of here and changing it here in Illustrator. So when uh, Christine saves this, it'll automatically update in our XD file. Mm. Pretty slick. Um, and is there a way to save like a duplicate? Like if I wanted to add a hover state? Yes. So we could do, uh, we could do probably in here, what you do is actually unlink that. Okay. So now the vectors are all there. Uh -huh. So now you can just go. Oh. So it's unlinked, but here we're, again, we're customizing it to do the hover state here in XD. So it might not matter that it's unlinked now. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but now all the vectors are there. Oh, that's so, so yeah. easy. So I even asked, is it copied, is it possible to copy and paste AI files to XD? Yes, you can. You can, uh, again, it kind of depends on your workflow, again, what you want to do. This is a pretty complex illustration, so it might be better to keep it uh, in Illustrator, or it just might be easier and more flexible if you just copy and paste those vectors from Illustrator into XD. That way, it's unlinked through Creative Cloud Libraries. It stays linked to that source document. So it's kind of up to you, again, whatever kind of meets your needs, whatever workflow kind of meets your needs, um, you're trying to support that. So, oh man, there was a really, there was a good name. Now it's gone. It's gone to history in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> tap and go. That's, pretty, that's not too bad. Yeah. Global tap. Lane. Thanks for the suggestion. That's good. That's pretty good. Tapster. Tapster. That's that's not bad. That's pretty good too. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna take a vote here. You guys, I'm I'm gonna write down some of my favorites and we're gonna vote a little later. So, I think globe hoppers is is 
kind of at the top of the list for us here. It's, and we have yeah, it's Tapster, <laughs> and we have, uh, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, we'll, or, Drafty, Drafty. <laughs> 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 that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. All right. Draft. <laughs> Beer Advisor, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mug Life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Anita, we're creating the hover state. So in the on the website, so we're designing for the web. When the user you know starts interacting with the map, we want to start showing uh, kind of a like a, a hover state, basically showing that like oh, there's more information here. We're showing a label that we're not displaying when you're just looking at the map. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's like Fifty Shades of Beer. There we go. <laughs> that was one. Okay. 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 I'm writing these down. We're gonna keep 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 them coming. So what I've done so far is mm -hmm. I just yeah, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. I just added a hover state. Mm -hmm. um, so I colored in the country. I added a little tooltip mm -hmm. so you know what country you're hovering over, um, and then clicking on that will take me to this beer image. So you, you guys want to know another hidden feature in XD? I do. All right. <laughs> in any of the UI or on Canvas, we support emojis. Oh. So if we want to do a little beer emoji next to the label of the United States, the United States of America. So I can just go in here. Yep. Yep. Be like beer. Ah, look at that. Oh, whoa. <laughs> this is how you. <laughs> we, we got into the habit of engagement. actually naming our layers with emojis. That was kind of a funny, that was a funny trend for a while on the team. <laughs> how do you find them then? Like, there's uh, no easy way to search for That's emojis, true. Right? No, that's true. But uh, we don't quite, we don't have search yet on the layers panel, but we will mm. in, in, in the future here. But, um, but uh, yeah, we'll have support for emojis probably in the search possibly too. We'll cool. see. We'll see. <laughs> Lots to figure out there. But yes, we'll use little emojis. Um, so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pint wrist. <laughs> Ryan with the with the Pinterest the pint oh pint with the different emphasis on the yeah yeah very nice very nice hopster we I didn't write that one down hopster that's that's pretty good too all right <laughs> that's beautiful <laughs> got some puns I like it I like the puns okay so I think yep. this is going to be good enough for now at least you can start to see some of it coming mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. um, obviously it's not the most beautiful thing in the world but hopefully but, uh, it conveys yeah. yeah the yeah, point exactly exactly uh, uh, Alistair um, I, I can't remember I think you should be able to do it on Windows but don't quote me cuz I I may be wrong with the with the emoji thing so yeah all right welcome everyone who's just joining us remember the challenge design your recipe sharing app uh, submit it through the sharing tab there in the chat on Behance uh, to win a year Creative Cloud subscription. So, yeah, we're just you know we're sharing a lot of little little tips here. We just showed emojis support in XD, <laughs> just a little, just just one of those things. It's um, available. Yeah, yeah, look at that, <laughs> amazing. And actually, you showed when you were in the assets panel, you showed one of the, the one of the new features was right there. You see, yes. the assets panel is actually now a search and a filter. Oh. So it's amazing. kind of a combo. You can click in there and you can search. Uh, so you can search. You say I think you can type like the color. Color. If you type like black, oh no, it didn't do it. Okay, uh, I think or Helvetica. Uh, we don't have much in there, but basically yeah, the search yeah. is there. And also, if you click on the, the little sh the little chevron there, uh, you can also filter um, by the different asset types. So when you have a lot in there, mm. now you can filter to see just colors or just character styles or just your symbols. So yeah, so just a little little small enhancement to cool. the to the assets panel there. So. Yeah, at this stage, um, you know, there's not much because it's wireframes, but yep. let's actually jump into the visual design so let's we can it. start to yeah. fill some of this let's out. Do it. So what I like to do is I just like to make a copy of this file. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say Peers of the World Visuals or Hi Fi mockups. So that way we have a copy of it. Um, and then we can start to add some colors. Okay. Um, so yeah. One thing that I like to do is just create like a super quick, like color palette. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, let's see, let's create some on top of the world. Very nice, Eric. <laughs> on <laughs> <laughs> maybe I want to use a dark color. 
um, for the background so that I can make this beer image pop. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. that's like a super hated word in yeah, the design well. community. <laughs> make it pop. Make it but, pop. Give it um, some contrast. We'll say yes. it that way. How about that's a little more high minded, a little more designer <laughs> talk. There you go. Need some contrast. Need some contrast. Use some higher. This could use a little more hierarchy. <laughs> yes. We want all of the attention to be around the spear. Yes. Um, yes, indeed. So we yes, need indeed. that. I think we also want like a primary color uh -huh. to mm -hmm. um, highlight any like H1s or calls to yeah. action. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's that's a really good point. Uh, like you're, you're trying to tell a story, you're trying to emphasize certain elements. Um, and here in the wireframing stage, you can use color uh, to really do that, to really help lead people through this story, help them follow, again, the, the path of, of the user as they're kind of giving you feedback or maybe testing this very early on. Um, as you're selling, as you're really telling the story to your stakeholders, trying to get them bought in. So I like this. I like this stage. You know, like um, to kind of take the break to really start focusing more on like the the color story that you're trying to tell. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's nothing super scientific about it. No, I'm just no, no, like no. going like, with my gut. Yeah. And you're like, huh, I need a dark background dark color, to you make primary color. You need a highlight this, color, call yeah, to or call to action hierarchy. color, right? And you need kind of a background color. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna make those global colors? Yes. Sweet. So once I've decided to commit to these colors, I can actually go in here and add them to my color palette here, mm -hmm. or I can um, add them to the asset library yep. here, so I can just reuse them. Yep. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. So then, anytime you uh, change them, actually, uh, can, I, can I show? Yeah, I wanted to show people. It. This is this is really uh, so on my machine here. I wanted to kind of show you guys this wireframe kit. Um, that's really awesome. You guys should go download it. Uh, called wires. You can get there from inside of XD or here, I'm sure uh, Gus will put it in the chat. But this really just shows off like the power of the asset panel. So here I have you know, this really amazing wireframe kit. Again, this is a thing that you'll, you should be building your recipe app from. Really helps me get some building blocks, really place them in. And now in the assets panel, because all the colors are here, when I go and actually edit that color, the whole feel and style of the app can just change on the fly. So if you're thinking a little ahead, if you're just kind of preparing for you know, possible iterations you can do in the future, you start using that asset panel, this kind of shows off some of the power of that. And it's just, I, we were doing this the other day and just sort of seeing this sort of like the vibe of this wireframe app just sort of be customized to my own brand colors. Um, again, really helping cust starting to customize it uh, very quickly. I thought this was really cool. So I want to show that to everybody. Same thing with type or any of the icons. You can see all that global color actually changed in all the icons too and updated those everywhere they're being used in the document. So the power of the assets panel. And I'll show you also here some more like you now here you can filter the ship today. Go update if you haven't. <laughs> uh, you can now filter here in the assets panel to show you just your colors or st character styles or symbols. So, or you can search. Um, so apparently there might be a little bug there, but basically you can now search and it will filter all your uh, assets here in the mm -hmm. asset panel. So, cool. and that's super useful, like especially if you have to work with stakeholders or other team members, and they're like, "Oh, what about this color? What mm -hmm. if you try this color?" And you can just easily do it like that rather than going into each screen and be like, "Does this work? Does this work?" Yeah. And then you forget to update it on certain screens. So, um, it's a really powerful tool. It is it one is, that definitely. I rely on a yeah. lot. Cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to color some of this stuff in. We want to add a background, so I'm just going to draw a quick rectangle. Oh, actually, I already have a rectangle. No, I don't have a rectangle. Add okay, a rectangle. A background to your map here. Yep. yep. And then I just clicked on that color. It already applied it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure that this is a background, so just drag this down. Mm, very good. Um, and actually, I'll make this. You actually a label symbol. it. Very, oh, oh, nice. So that way, if I decide to change the color mm -hmm. later on, mm -hmm. I can just easily tweak change it. that. Yeah, yeah. So let's add it to you this. Can also, mm -hmm. change the background color of the artboard. Oh. So you can actually just here, here, there. There you there, go. Ah, oh, look at that. So easy. <laughs> uh, that's okay. what. Uh, that's the benefit of being on stream with <laughs> the designer who's used XD the longest. Exactly. <laughs> Perks. <laughs> um, but as you can see, it doesn't look super cute with this black mm -hmm. contrast. Yeah. So maybe I'll I'll just play around with this one a little mm -hmm. bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try maybe a gradient. 
Oh, fancy. There's nothing, yeah, once again, there's nothing super scientific about yeah, it. It's yeah. just like. You're just trying to tell a story here at this wireframe level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Playing with it, seeing what works, um, trial and error. Mm -hmm. So let's take this color and probably add another stop here. That's also that color. Drag it down ish. Mm -hmm. And maybe not make this super. We'll just make it super subtle. Um, and all of my text is black, so that's why it's disappearing into the background. Mm -hmm. So let's fix that. Let's. Oh, are you, yeah, yeah. Are you going to do that through, through there? Mm -hmm. We'll just do it like that. Excellent. Me. All right, great. Um, and then we probably want to think about, like, Helvetica is a common font. It's fine. We want to, it works, <laughs> but I think we want to add some character, especially yeah. once we get that name mm -hmm, decided. Mm -hmm. It might help inform what kind of font we use. Mm -hmm. um, but for right now, I think um, using some kind of like sans serif and serif combo might be nice mm -hmm. to have that contrast. Yeah. So uh, one of my favorite is, is actually Charter. Mm -hmm. So, oh, let's go back to the assets panel here. So before it was Helvetica new, I'm actually going to edit this to say Charter. Yeah. And we want to use maybe the H1 oh, very nice. beer yep. color. <laughs> yep. um, so that'll be the beer name. This one, I think it's this guy here. Yep. So let's try this color. It might be a little too dark. That's OK. Uh, well, we can tweak it later. Yeah. yeah. And maybe instead of using Helvetica, let's try Freight Sands Pro. Mm -hmm. Go back here. Did that do anything? Yes. Um, and then same thing for these guys. Let's change this to Great Sands. Oops, what did I do? Oh, click, I, I think what happened, yeah. Click, yeah, the, yeah, there you go, yep. Edit. Nice. Great. This. Um, and we wanna get these guys Those ones too. all here. Oh, so. Oh, uh, missed it. It's like that one. There's a little, we have a little, there's a little hiccup in the thing, but click on the plus, so just add that new one, and then we'll delete delete that one uh, later. So then select those and use that new one. There gotcha. you go. Yep. There, nah, there we go. Okay. We missed, <laughs> there's a hidden one. There we go. All right. right. <laughs> Done. <laughs> um, and then one thing that I forgot to include is like the body copy. So this might be my H3, but we want to add some content to these. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go ahead and. John. Charter is beer is classy. Charter is a classy choice for and you know beer can be very classy. <laughs> <laughs> Thicker fonts for frothier beers. That's a, that's a good that's a good uh, that's a good slogan. <laughs> Thicker fonts for frothier beers. <laughs> um, uh, the Duantis, what does Object Blur and XD do? So uh, are you talking about background blur? Background blur. So background blur, if you sl if you have a, say like a square or any shape, and you apply that background blur on it, it'll actually affect the things underneath it. So if you wanted to get that frosted glass iOS or uh, you know Windows, the new Windows look, uh, you could use that to, to simulate that look. So, yep, yep. So here we are with we're with Christine Lee, uh, product designer down at Evernote, and today we're designing a, uh, a an app a service to help. Travelers find local beers and learn something about the culture through beer uh, at that country they're traveling to or the country they're in. So we've started off with a kind of high-level wireframe walkthrough. Uh, now we're kind of adding some style to it. Uh, maybe the sort of brand style that we're going to be reusing um, for the name of the app and for all the styles and uh, type and everything and colors throughout the application. Um, so yeah, so here we are. Um, we're getting into it. We're also, we have our design challenge today. So if you want to design along with us, uh, the challenge today is to design a recipe finder app. Uh, so kind of similar uh, in, in the in the theme. Um, so uh, you can download a template and kind of get going, customize it, drag and drop, um, and submit through the challenge tab on the chat. And we'll be giving away one year Creative Cloud subscription today. On the So join us, design with us. If you have any questions about XD, any questions about design in general, let us know. Yeah, so yep. I'm just continuing to tweak this page. I think it's still going to be a lot of trial and error. All right. Um, just maybe trying to add some hierarchy and visual contrast yeah, um, no, to this screen. Yeah, that's always good. 
So. All right, well, why don't you keep doing that, and actually we'll start um, maybe looking at some of the submissions. Yes. So you keep rolling, good. and we're going to look at some of the some of the, today's submissions. So here we have Recipe Zado. Res oh, Resposado. Resposado. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> All right, so I have my login page. I'm going to sign up, of course, because every, every you need to sign in, perhaps. So I'm going to hit continue here. All right. Oh, it's going to tell me a little bit about Reposado. Discover Reposado, a recipe sharing app for all the foodies out there. I think all of us here in San Francisco, particularly if you're a designer, everyone, I could, we're all foodies in some way, right? <laughs> um, all right, let's get started. Let's check it out. All right, we're going to see, ooh, get us really excited about some of the some of the food we could be finding. There's a vegetable ragu. We have a, that looks ooh, so good. Oh, very nice tomato and chili soup. Of course, it's right at lunchtime, so it's getting, <laughs> of course, very timely. Um, we have a salad. We're going to walk through kind of all the sexy product, the sort of food shots. Um, all right, so here we are. We're now into the app. We see a feed. Um, we see, I think, people out there discovering and sharing their images. I think that's what we're here to do. We're here to look and actually be inspired by, by our friends that are out there, so discovering new food in the area. So Frida, she had, ooh, fries, uh, that's a weakness. Uh, we definitely, I, I'm definitely interested in the best fries. Let's go check it out. The best fries in the world. Oh, this is, so this is a recipe they tried out themselves and they actually maybe Instagrammed a photo of that and shared that here. Let me scroll down here. I'm just a small town girl making the best fries in the world. <laughs> that's not weird at all. No, you, you, That's you, super catchy. No, Fries are a universally loved thing. I don't, fried potatoes anywhere in the world. That's not weird at all. Totally, oh, we got the back arrow there. We got the feet, oh, we got some more. Looky, Mc, <laughs> looky McLuxon. I love it, I love it good. That's always good. Hey, you gotta have fun when you're making, doing these, and I love that about it. Sneaking in little, little, little inside jokes. Nice, all right, so we've got some foods. I, I found, I'm gonna try those fries. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Let's, all right. I'm gonna go queue up a couple more. Let's go over and see where Christine is. All um, right. So I'm just continuing to tweak. As you can see, my character styles has gotten pretty rowdy. Um, I'm just gonna keep going with it and then we can clean that up later. Clean that up later, it's so easy, yeah, definitely. Like, again, like I think you're totally right, we're just trying some new ideas uh, and yeah, I think that's what that's for. That's I, I work with that panel open all the time, and I'm I'm constantly just like adding new ones as I go, and as I'm developing, you know, my app, uh, and then again, it's really easy to go and clean that up later. And actually, a new feature, if you want to show it off to everybody mm -hmm. that launched today, if you go over and you right click on any of your styles here, say choose like the the, the charter one, uh, and then you say highlight on canvas, Ooh. it'll actually highlight where that style is in use on canvas. And this works for the global colors or the character styles or symbols. Um, this might help you kind of you know, identify ones that you're using or even ones that you're not using. Mm -hmm. It really helps you kind of kind of uh, you know kind of clean that up later on. That's super it's useful. Pretty handy. Pretty Especially handy. like when you start developing it and you need to hand off your specs to the developers and there's so many different shades of gray. Yeah. I think that's a common um, like problem that yeah, designers have. For sure, so for sure. Just to consolidate everything into like one shade of gray. Yeah, that's um, great. I mean, I even found working with that panel open actually helps me stop that. Like actually kind of like cures that a little bit. Because if I'm like, I'm going to use a gray, I don't just use the color picker to choose a new gray. I just click on the one on the swatch of the <laughs> global styles. Exactly. Very nice. All right, we've got some more submissions. So here we've got, uh, right, we've got Recipool. Recipool from Narendra. We're gonna log in. We're gonna discover. Very nice. We've got some nice little slide transitions going on. And here we have our feed. All right. And we're gonna go here. We're gonna check out this one. Recipes on demand. Very nice. See, look, there's there's the example of the background blur. Mm. I remember who was asking about it. Mm -hmm. With the background blur right there. Got that frosted glass look. That iOS, you know, everybody <laughs> loves their frosted glass. Uh, <laughs> very nice. Nice work, Narendra. Thanks for thanks for submitting. Go back to home there. All right, let's go check out Felicia's here. All right, cookie cookie recipe sharing app. All right, going specific Ooh. here. I gotta get that that niche. Gotta find your audience. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna discover some cookies. Let's get going. 
we have our our feed here. Let's go see what Paul's shared with us. Oh, Paul shared with us some refrigerator cookies. I've made I've made refrigerator cookies before. Very nice. Um, all right. Oh, there you go. What's the, let's see. We clicked on that. So here, and then here. We're gonna click on the name, and we go here to maybe search. Maybe find a little more out. Maybe search based on these. Nice, nice colors. Got you got tweaking the kind of global colors and styles from that that uh, wireframe kit. Looking good. That nice one, Felicia. All right. We have here from Rick. We got we got Rick's food recipe app. All right, so here we go. Oh, this kind of gives us kind of a nice roundup of all the different things, all the different uh, recipes that are that are being shared. Let's see, we're gonna look at suggestions. Let's go see suggestions. Oh, very nice. This is nice. These are some nice cards here. Very visual. A student meal. Oh, it's, yeah, this is good on a budget. So very good. Always want. That's always a good one to look for. All right, got some scrolls going on here. Got some. I can share this out as well. Nice, goes back. Oh, we've got a little little hamburger menu. And we can go see the oh, back to the recipes, or we can go back to home. Nice. That's a nice integration of the of the hamburger menu. This is this is pretty good. That's very nice. Nice. Love seeing your work. In... Do that all in an hour? That's super impressive. No, I know. <laughs> That's really, really impressive. It looks like I popped up bricks twice there. Alright, so now I'm gonna hear uh I'm not sure. We'll have to go back to the to the to the thing and see who this one is, but we have uh, we're gonna search, go back here, back on the feed. All right, so I'll go about whoever submitted this one, you could fix this. And so when you select your artboard in XD, if you go over here, there's a little section that says scrolling. And if you change it to vertical, now your, your, your size of your screen will be snapped to that sort of standard screen size, and then you can uh, scroll that content on there. So little workflow tip on that one. And then we're gonna click on here, and we're gonna see some more details here. Nice, thanks for the submission, it's great. All right, here we go, a tasty affair. It tastes good, let's share it, <laughs> nice. Okay, so here I am, of course I'm gonna log in. It's interesting, I, I like that everyone's included the screen, but I wonder what people, how what their feelings are about this too. All right, so we're gonna click that, and we're gonna hop in. Nice, this is nice, very visual. We've got the scroll here. Again, so the artboard is a scrolling artboard, so now you can make it as long as you want. And let's see, using repeat grid. Uh, repeat grid's my favorite feature. It's so easy it's so just good. to pop in content. I still love just doing that, like just like getting up and like like showing people repeat grid is still like one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Walter, if we haven't seen it yet, we're gonna get to it. Uh, we'll keep we'll keep popping these up and checking them out. So hang with us, we'll, we'll get to them all. Um, so we have the Tasty Affair. This is really nice, Lo lots of detail. See, I'm gonna follow the plus. Oh, I'm gonna add my own recipe here. Huh. This is my form where I can do that. Oh, look at that. Popped it in, filled it out. I'm gonna submit it. Congratulations, your recipe has now been posted. This is really nice, Sukata. This is really, really, really well done. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go over to our profile now. Here's our profile. All of our submissions right here. Oh, then that we can also follow the upload path there. Nice reusing kind of the different components. It's nice flows here. I can close, get rid of that. Close that. We got the menu, go here. Oh, very nice, Sukata, this is, this is really great. Very nicely done. I like that one. All right, I'll load up a few more. Let's go back and see what Christine is doing now. All right, so what, tell us what you're up to here. Um, uh, give you so we've got you've named we got this is the type of beer that we've got. Yes. How do you is, how do you say that? I think it's Kilnes. 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 <laughs> I don't know. From just, Argentina. From Argentina. Nice. Um, so what I did is I actually have a little sheet with some content already populated. Oh. Um, oh, nice. And so I just kind of popped that into this template that we created mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and then took a look at the spacing. I'm using rules of eight. Mm -hmm. So making sure that everything is spaced properly. Um, and I think this is good enough for now. Um, so this is like kind of the screen that we have for beer details. And then I think I'm gonna go in here and work on this map page and make sure that 
the transition from here to here. Yeah, it actually makes the maps fits. very nice. Yes. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, what I really like is that you, you had done some work beforehand or some research on the different types of beers. Um, like designing to the actual content, I think is really important, right? getting there as quickly as possible. And I don't know if you, you saw it a couple years ago, uh, a colleague of mine shared a prototype that we mm -hmm. had made where we we're calling it designing with data where mm -hmm. in XD, maybe in the future, you'd be able to actually select that body copy and actually w wire it up to your Google Doc and actually have oh. it like pull that content in directly from your Google Doc. Does that work? Not yet. Oh. No, it's <laughs> a, it was a really amazing prototype and we just, we, uh, we, it's still definitely out there, something that, again, we're just, if people are, when people get really excited about something and then they can vote on it in our user voice, that helps us kind of prioritize the work that we have to do. Mm. And so it's exciting, and but like not everybody would use that, a feature like that. So yeah. we haven't, I and mean, we still kind of uh, have been trying to keep it going on the side, but it's definitely something gotcha. we want to do in the future that sort of designing with data where I could you know, connect uh, my design to content in a Google Doc, uh, maybe from a website. Um, we did a demo at a talk I gave where I actually connected it to my Instagram account. Oh. And I actually just pulled all the images directly into my design for my Instagram account. Uh huh. And I actually was pulling it live. So I actually took a photo of the audience and it actually updated my design like while I was standing up in front of this audience giving a talk. Wow. Pretty cool. Go check yeah. it out. It's on YouTube. Design X Adobe XD designing with data. It's from Adobe Max a couple years ago. Cool. Pretty cool. That would cool. be super nifty to yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. The other thing too is like, um, remember how we had explored this, this, oh, I don't know if you could see it, but in our earlier sketches we had talked about potentially, um, instead of doing the map views, showing the list of beers. Mm, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to do that, this is something else that I've been playing around with is um, the repeat grid oh, yeah. that you mentioned yeah. earlier. So let's say I wanted to do that and like I just have this beer here and then I have like this content. Um, I'll just delete these guys for now. So the easy thing is like once you have your base screen, you can mm -hmm. also kind of like fork off and explore different tangents. Mm -hmm. So, oops. Um, this doesn't look like a stray object in that one. There's a stray object. Yeah, ungroup it. Uh, ungroup that one real quick. And then ungroup that one. Now group those two again. Okay. All right. <laughs> Whatever it was, we fixed it. Okay. okay. So there's this thing called repeat grid. It's actually super nifty. So all you have to do is there's all these beers, and then there's all these beers. Nice. Um, and and what, if you hover between them, do that. That's my favorite part. Oh, and then, yeah. <laughs> oh, and just that's adjust so cool. The spacing. It's, it's so cool. too easy. Um, so then what you can yep. start to do yep. is if you did want to explore this direction, I actually have this text file with all the countries. Oh, nice. Um, so if you actually just drag it. Drop it. Drag it and drop it. You can see that it just updated all the content automatically. Oh. So rather than saying, what was it before, Argentina? You're having to type it all out yourself? Yes, no. now it's all in alphabetical order. Um, if I wanted to go even further, I can just keep going. Same thing for the image too. Mm -hmm. Like if I wanted to update the image, I have a bunch of photos here. Well, this is a, just an empty glass, but for we'll, demonstration we'll purposes, we'll I can just drop it on here. Oops. Oh, it might be because it, it's, oh, uh, yeah. Is it because it's it, is it, Yeah, it's just, uh, on, yeah, it's because it's not in a shape, I think. Oh. So, right. yeah, yeah. So because it's just, just a, yeah, yeah, quick. just add a, yeah, just add a shape over it real, real quick. That'll okay. get the point. <laughs> um, and then I drop it in here. You'll nice. see that it just automatically, just automatically takes those. Very cool. Yeah. So what normally would have taken like what maybe an hour, mm -hmm. thirty minutes, now just took two seconds. That's, and if you if you had all of those, this is something I do a lot. If you had all of those beers from around the world in a library, mm -hmm. you can do the same thing. So you can have a Creative Cloud library with your beer library, and you can grab them all from there and just drag them in and drop them in and they'll go into the repeat grid. And now if you go and edit any of them in Photoshop, they'll update uh, immediately inside your design. Very cool. And this is super handy because there's like what, 190 plus countries in this world. So it's super easy to just grab a text file, drop, drop in the content in. and you're pretty That's much That's great, that's great. Hey Matthias, good to see you. <laughs> I was wondering if you were gonna show up today. 
Uh, Matias is uh, is one of our moderators here from the Adobe team, always joining us in chat, along with Tim. They're team rulers. They really want to see rulers in XD as rulers. a feature. Would you like to see rulers? Do you use rulers at all? I do use rulers yeah. occasionally. Yeah. Um, but... uh, she's not helping your case, <laughs> Tim and Matias. I know I should be, but I'm not that sophisticated. <laughs> well, you know, like, I mean, I, this is the kind of things that get, I get excited about is like, uh, I want to know like how people use, use rulers, really why they use them, mm -hmm. and that, and so we can kind of look at like, well, uh, do they are they using rulers the way they think they're using rulers, or are they using it to do this other thing, and we could have a feature that actually solves it for them in a different way? Right. Like one of those things actually influenced us not having rulers or guides is we actually thought a lot about the copy paste behaviors. Mm -hmm. I know it seems really geeky, but again, this is my job, so I get really, <laughs> I'm really geeked out about it. But we thought a lot about like, where should the proper positioning be if I copy and paste something? Say, on the same artboard, or I go from one artboard to another artboard. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, actually, when you move from, copy from one artboard to another one, and you paste it, it pastes in exactly the same place. Uh, it's kind of a really detailed thing, but other apps, again, don't behave like that. But yeah. we wanted to say like, you know, one of the things that people use with guides and rulers is to make sure things are aligned across artboards. And one of the things that could help you do that without using rulers or guides is actually enhancing that copy-paste behavior, really thinking about how a designer is going to be using it uh, and what they're trying to do. That's true. So yeah, just, that's just, the only reason I use rulers is to make sure that everything is aligned yeah, in the artboard. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah just a little window into some of our process. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, uh, I actually have uh, Valter. Uh, he uh, wanted to know, I just missed his in the list, so actually we're gonna check out his Burger, Burger Easy uh, app. So let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna log in. Hey! Look, is that, is that, is that a picture of you, Valter? I'm gonna, I'm gonna think, <laughs> I, I think it is. Let's eat. I like it, all right. I'm hungry, yep, it's lunchtime. So here is a list. Uh, customize it. Did you, uh, you know, interested? Did you use the global asset? Did you use the asset panel to do this? I'd be interested to know. Um, excellent. Let's see. We're gonna go. We're gonna search. All right. We got some search here. We can do. Oh, a Brazilian burger. I've never had a Brazilian burger. That would be pretty good. Uh, I'm looking for a really good recipe. That looks like a great recipe. Picture really sells it. I think we're gonna have to do that one. Nice. <laughs> Nice work, Walter. Thanks for thanks for the, doing the challenge again, everybody. You've got about t eight more minutes if you want to get in. Uh, submit your recipe finder app uh, through the challenge tab on the Behance chat. Uh, get it in there because you could win a year Creative Cloud subscription. And Christine and I will be uh, choosing our favorite here in just a little bit. So sounds good. All right, excellent. Oh, so now you're doing a, a mobile version. You're actually taking and you've copied and pasted over, and now you're gonna tweak uh, your layout for mobile. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if um, this would look okay in mobile. Like, obviously, you can see that things are flying off the screen, so maybe I have to think about how it would responsively behave. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe rather than having everything in line here, I'll just kind of stack these guys and see how that looks. Um, and then nice, very I need nice. to adjust this guy so that you can actually see everything. Excellent. Um, I think using the scrolling, you, you see that that's actually a new UI there, that little blue line. You can actually now grab and actually adjust your your scroll line, like the sort of size of your screen. Uh -huh. A nice little feature. Um, and I think it's important now that you mentioned mm -hmm. that to take a look at what it would look like in mobile. Oh yeah, let's check it out. So let's preview it. Like, if this is what you see on your phone, it's probably not super enticing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I probably want to drag Move these guys up. up. And what's mm -hmm. cool is that you just see everything in real time. It just happens in real so time. Fast. I know. It's, it does it with interactions, too. As you, or if you've seen that, if you actually, you can leave that preview window open. And it's it's basically refreshing. And it's showing you live what you're doing on, on Canvas the whole time. So, nice. And of course, also, if you wanted to actually see it on your device, you could just download the Adobe XD app on your phone, and you can either load it through Creative Cloud if you want to save this file in Creative Cloud, or you can just plug in live through USB on uh, on Mac and preview it uh, directly on your phone, on your device. Hmm. So it's also handy for, for testing it out and really fine tuning your design for the devices that you want it to be viewed on. Cool. So yeah, yeah very cool. Yeah, um, and so as you mentioned before, this scrolling thing, um, you can actually scroll 
within mm -hmm. the prototype too. Nice. So I think that's something pretty handy. Really nice. Because this is how people are going to be interacting with your app. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be seeing everything in one, in one view. So yeah. it's important to go back and double check and see what it would look like. Yeah, really nice. So um, speaking of that, let's take a look at what our prototype looks like now that we have this. Um, did I actually hook this up? I don't think I did. Let's just hook this I'll up super up. quick. We wanted this to dissolve. Um, this one, if I hover over this guy and click on it, maybe I wanted to push up. We'll mm -hmm. see how that feels. Right. Um, and then let's switch here. So, okay. so we hover over. Hovering over a country. I click Get on the country. our beer emoji, <laughs> very important. And now you Slides see up. one for Argentina, so you can see that that was not hooked <laughs> like, up correctly. Oh, well, yeah. That's not quite Argentina, <laughs> so let's, but let's go do that. Let's get in here and um, go back to the design tab. We'll fill in using the color from our color library. Yeah. Well, actually, let's add a new one. See a little darker, yeah. That looks good-ish. Add that. Um, and then we'll drag this guy, the tooltip back. Sukata asked me to re refresh, so I'm going to refresh. Okay, when we get back, we'll check it out again, Sukata. Um, oops, what color was that? Okay, and then update this to say Argentina. So now when I go back to the prototype, hover over Argentina. Oh, I have to go back and pick it up. <laughs> Wire that one. This is why prototyping is important. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Just, just, just solving all these problems before. Let's delete. Get there. Oops, did I delete the US? How can I? I'll remove select it the... and then just drag the wire handle. So you actually, yeah, there you go. Just drop okay. it. There you go. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Now hover over Argentina. Click on Argentina, and then you get Kilnes. Nice, very nice. So <laughs> I think we've got a nice flow going. I think, yeah, I think the the map is gonna it's gonna be good. And I think tomorrow, as we, as you kind of can kind of enhance that, like I liked your idea around the mobile too. Like, you know, it's kind of simulating like some of that GPS data influencing and actually helping you get to the beers that, that you might find, you know, around the corner like mm -hmm. that much faster. Yeah. So, yeah, very cool, very cool. Uh, Matthias, we no sneaks to well. We talked about a few things, but we didn't show anything. So you didn't miss didn't miss much in terms of <laughs> sneaking new things in XD. But we have been showing off the new features. If you guys haven't updated today, a brand new release today. Again, we do monthly releases with XD. Um, we've got some great enhancements to the assets panel. You're kind of seeing that here on Christine's screen. We have a new filter and search uh, in the assets panel. It's really great. Plus, you can actually use the assets panel to highlight where those styles and, uh, and uh, symbols are in use on Canvas. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we've got some new stuff going on. It's pretty, pretty excellent. So, um, names, uh, keep submitting your names. We've got, I've got a few written down. We're gonna vote on that towards the end of our session today. Um, and we've got, uh, let's see, one more to look at here. Uh, let's see, before we, actually, hold on one sec. We've got, let me load up. We've got three more to check out here before the cutoff. Um, let's go check it out. Let's make sure I have all those. Oh, one more there too. Uh, a few more. Gus is getting them in there. Let's see, tag team. Is there a way to add gradients to the color panel? There is. So can you can just add it. You can just add it. Oh. So you can just add it into the global color. What happened? Did we lose the gradient? It might have. It might have. I don't think it's on there. I think something when we were mess when we were selecting it around. So I have it as a background oh. Oh, yeah. color right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it should it should be there. I think that maybe the preview just might be a little small for the stops. So I, I'm pretty uh, sure I that's see. a gradient. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure you cool. Apply it, so or it went to the or it's it's one of. The, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Let me make sure I'm loading up all these, and I'm actually gonna pull out that one for a second. Loading up all the final submissions here. Let me just make sure I have them all. Yep, got that one. Yeah, I'm just 
Okay, you've got about 30 more seconds to submit. Uh, so make sure you get them in. I'll be loading them up. We'll be checking them out here. Uh, oh, we have the countdown right there underneath us. Um, <laughs> yes, Rachel, it's here. We're going to look at it in just one second. Um, make sure I have them all up here. All right, all right. I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, four, five. Okay, let's see, I'm missing one here. Which one are we missing? Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. some wonkiness going on with Google Sheets here. Let's go. All right, time's up. If you've, this, those are our last submissions. I think I've got them all loaded up here. Now let's do it. Okay. All right, we're gonna check them out now. Okay. Ooh, so we've got like Enos. Nice, looking good. So we got, that's a 10 minute recipe, a little preview of that. Oh, that's pretty really good. Oh, of course, incredible photos, really giving us the pitch here. Oh, that's looking nice. Look at that, nice, nice photography. 10 minute recipes. Let's go check out this. Oh, a chocolate cake. Very nice. Nice, nice illustration, nice style. I'm gonna like that. Maybe I'm gonna check that back late, later. Uh, let's go view the recipe. I love the white space. Oh, the white, white's really nice. And it's I like the, the uh, little, room. how much time maybe it has mm -hmm. uh, to go. Maybe I mark it. I think maybe as, as we go, we can actually mark those off. Maybe it helps us show like, that really helps me. I always kind of lose my place when I'm reading a recipe. Yeah. So then I'm gonna share. All right, I'm gonna share it with WhatsApp. Uh, hey, just check this out, this is this recipe. I'm gonna tell your friends about it, awesome. Nice, then we're back to, can explore and find new recipes. Really nice, that's really nice, really nicely done. I'm gonna pull that one out for a second. Okay, so here we have Bite Share. Let's check out Bite Share. Okay, we're gonna continue, so we've entered in our stuff. Welcome, cat, <laughs> is that my avatar or my cat? Maybe. Uh, what now? Let's go see. Discover, explore trending recipes and give them your own twist. Take me to the food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very nice, we'll do a little searching. Here we can search. It's just gonna show some recommendations there. And click on this one, we can see the ingredient list. Asai, I've never had asai. Have you had asai before? It is really good. Mm, okay, I'm gonna have to try it. It's a really good breakfast item, I think. Oh, nice. Nice, and so now I can go and I can see uh, that user, the real cat, and uh, I can see the recipes that, that the real cat has, has submitted before. Nice, this feels like a nice flow, kind of gives me kind of a sense of the kind of full experience of the app. I like you know, the copy really nice. too, take me to the food. Take it's me very to the direct. food, <laughs> yes, yes. Personality, again, like that really kind of is one of the key things that you're, when you're trying to tell a story or get people excited, it's important. All right, so we have mac uh, share macaroon all about sharing macaroon recipes, which <laughs> I think uh, are myriad of variations out there for macaroons. This is definitely a little subculture in and of itself. I have, I've definitely noticed that here in the city. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna discover more macaroons because I'm really into macaroons. Nice. Oh, look, there's Christine. She shared a bunch of recipes. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you were into sharing recipes, Christine. All right. <laughs> I'm a great multitasker. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> we're gonna search. We've got some search terms here. Nice, it's a good search results page. I like your, I like how you customize the, uh, Adrian, the, uh, the, the wireframe. Mm -hmm. Nice job sort of customizing that, dragging and dropping. You're gonna see Ellen, oh, oh here we're gonna see Christine, here's your profile. <laughs> nice photography, you're taking My very nice macaroons. photos of your macaroons as well. Giving me more credit than I deserve. <laughs> But I like how they used real data. I do, um, I do too. Because I think it's important to design with real data. Because well, yeah. you never know how long certain fields are going to be. 
or like how much space you'll need. So yeah, no, definitely. Kudos. I think that was when I was talking about the designing with data. That was one mm -hmm. of the like we actually saw that as a benefit. We, and you know, one of our challenges that when you're working on particular products international is you want to be looking at how the, everything will be translated because right. you run into some real problems, exactly. especially German. You run into some problems when you're translating into German, in German. Uh, as so of course hard. I'm sure you know at Evernote <laughs> and here at Adobe. So we we actually one of the demos we were connected to uh, the file that our uh, translator had sent us, mm. our Google Doc, so mm -hmm. we could just wire up our design to the different different. Uh, uh, translations. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Yeah, I, I like that using real content. I think people can really connect to that as well. Like when you're user testing it, like if you can make it, them connect to it, make it seem a little more real, I think you'll get a better uh, uh, a better response. <laughs> Amos, yes, but you didn't like uh, do you do the design in German. I assume you do design in German. <laughs> you are working on the hardest use case, the edge case. <laughs> no, not in a bad way. Uh, it's tricky. It's tricky. We've definitely had to to think a lot about, it. and we designed for, you know, like the our the WXD actually being translated into you know French and German and um, Korean and Japanese. And it's especially tricky. if you have like right to left languages yeah. like Farsi. Yeah. Um, you also have to think about how that's going to look. Yeah. Because it, yeah, your early, layout needs to be flexible enough to accommodate yeah, that. Yeah. Earlier is better than later because later exactly. you just might you just might break it. So. Yeah. All right, we're going to check out this this app here. Um, we're going to discover. Oh, I see that this one actually checked the box to launch in full screen mode. Nice touch mm. on this one. Uh, so I'm not distracted by comments and all the other things. I'm focused on the experience. So I'm going to get started. We've got some, some recipes. Let's go see this chicken noodle soup. That looks really good. Oh, nice. John Doe submitted this one. Let's go back. Search. We've got the search. Really nice. Nice. That's a nice one as well. All right, we'll move on here to Recipe Pro. I like the little shadows, kind of very subtle going on here. You can go to Johnny Appleseed. Ooh, cauliflower. <laughs> I love roasted cauliflower. So good. Nice. Got the whole, I like, and then again, real content. Here's, yeah. it looks like this is a, a real recipe sort of added here to the cauliflower. Again, like, it's good to know like what you're designing for, so you're you can really work with it and really find a creative solution for handling something's very dense information like a recipe. And I like the hierarchy too. It's very clearly um, separated. Mm -hmm. So you see the overview of the recipe, and then you see like how long it's going to take, mm -hmm. and the who's like created the recipe, and then you actually get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, really good, nice. Good hierarchy and structure. Nice one. I'm gonna add that over there. Okay, we got cuisine de maman. <laughs> One of my favorite restaurants <laughs> in in here, actually in the area up on Potero Hill, is called Shea Maman. Very, mm. very good place. Um, all right, so let's go check it out. We're going to discover. Now, we just we just discovered. There you go. Just two <laughs> screens on that one. Nice. Make sure you, you check your your prototype wiring for the one who submitted this one. So, very nice. Well, nice work, everyone. That's really great. So, oh, we have one more. Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. Nice illustration. I like this. Very a lot of character. Let's go in. Of course, oh, this looks like maybe very dessert focused. Oh, it is. Chocolate. Oh, no, chocolate and ice cream. Mm. Oh, yep. All the desserts being shared. Go ahead and see it. I guess a little detail on that. Nice. We got the search. All right. Oh, we got that one. There we go. There we go. There's the search there. Mm. Excellent. Nice work. Nice customizing of the of the UI kit. Looking good. I know. Any any standing out for you, Christine? Um, I don't know. That I'm really impressed with what people I, have I completed in Look an hour. Time. I I'm mean, just like working on the same three screens, and you guys have created like know, yeah. <laughs> all these visuals and interactions. It's so pretty these, amazing. I, we have a few here that that I thought that I kind of pulled out as we went. Um, See, it was so we have this one, the really nicely sort of like your nice style, nice illustration. Mm -hmm. Oh, row twenty six. Let's see. I had a few more. One second here, guys. Yeah, I missed a few. Let me go back. Row twenty six and twenty one. Robert, there we go. Okay, and twenty one. There. Okay, two more to check out. Here we go. Okay, already. 
All right, so we have the recipe renaissance. Discover, very nice. Let's get cooking. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Uh, it looks like maybe someone took my tip on the on adjusting the global colors in the wireframe. If you did, awesome. Nice. That's why it's important to, to, to build a great asset panel. Start thinking about how you can start reusing uh, elements across your design. Let's go search. Taco pizza as my top result. Mmm, interesting. <laughs> Taco pizza. Man, I'm just now really thinking that like, I have not had lunch yet. Oh, roasted cauliflower. Mmm. Nice, again here using kind of real real data. That's really nice too. Nice work on that one. Let's, I'm gonna pop that one out over here too. All right, so here's our last review of the day, Recipe Magic. Let's jump in, discover, discover share, and inspire. Let's get started. Here we have our list. Let's go see the, the recipe, some waffles. Oh, and you can actually have a little conversation maybe going mm. around this recipe. That's a nice idea too. Very nice. I could see that being super social with your friends mm -hmm. if you want to like cook brunch together. It's like, hey, there's this recipe that we yeah. should try out. So. We'll check it out. Yeah. Nice. Nice work, everyone. Thanks for designing with us today. All right. <laughs> I, I've pulled out a few here. Let's see. Okay. So we have sucatas here that I think this was the one. I think it was the most kind of had the most complete workflow. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of detail, a lot of real kind of content being used. Uh, different states of the app, which was nice to see, sort of really giving you a sense of, of, the, of the full workflow. Um, so you hop in, so tasty affair. Again, really customize those components, I think, very nicely. Had a nice color scheme going on here. You can go ahead and read that recipe. Again, similar, like using some of the real content, showing some of the prep time that you would need. Oh, I didn't oh, see the share sharing. It. I didn't see the sharing thing. That's oh, really, really cool. told through everything. Yeah. Plus, if I wanted, then of course we could add our own recipe. Mm -hmm. Walking through that, this. that, uh, that prone. there. All right, nice. I've submitted. It gives me a little congratulations. Your recipe has now been posted. That's 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 good to have. Like, oh, it's there. And look, there oh. it is. Actually, in my in my feed, in Eve's feed, I should say. Very <laughs> nice. And we've got the menu as well. Uh, this is uh, this is really nice, Sagata. Let's see. All right. So then we had um, recipe renaissance by Robert. That was very nice. Some nice customization. Of course, I like that. Uh, maybe took the the tips on the using the assets panel here to style the wireframe. I thought that was very nice. And of course, I'm a sucker for cauliflower. <laughs> so. And I think again, like having like really the full like using kind of the, the real content, I thought it was really nice in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and Enos, really great, but but he already won. <laughs> <laughs> so very nicely done. This is a beautiful recipe yeah. app, but I think we're gonna give it to somebody new uh, today. So here we have. I thought this one was nice again. I think this is another one, cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, using the real content. I thought those were all really nice things. Of course, we have the liking state, really nice. Um, is cauliflower and we have, having a moment? It seems to be really popular. I think it is. I don't know. It's it's just it's so good. How could you not love it? Of course, it's a very wintery thing. So maybe when we get into summer, it'll be less of a thing. That's so true. Um, yeah. Oh, and they have the share sheet. Again, like really making it feel like a real application, like actually using the share sheet. I thought this was this really nice as well. Yeah, it's a good use of native components, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. balancing yeah. that with your visual style. And and I, th I think it looks like they used actually the iOS UI kit oh. from Apple to oh. actually pull this component. Nice. Bonus, bonus. Yeah, this, yeah. Again, it's a really good use of that UI kit. Again, really showing and communicating to say maybe your developer that again, rather than us designing and implementing our own sharing style sheet, actually just using the native iOS one that uh, is very easy for a developer to implement. Mm -hmm. Really nice, really yeah. nice. Again, that's a really good consideration. So I don't know, you've, uh, how are you feeling about, about those there, Christine? Any, any standing out for you? We have uh, Sucatas, which is very, again, really gave us a sense of not only browsing, but actually submitting our own recipe. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. We had uh, the recipe renaissance here from Robert, who was really sort of showcasing uh, some of the global style workflows to customize the wireframe. Uh, so again, feels like gives a little personality, but also had like really showing like you know what kind of information what I really have here on on a recipe. 
Um, we have, um, of course, the one here we just looked at, the Recipe Pro, that they used, uh, again, similar, like a lot of great content, but you kind of threw in this sort of native component. Um, and of course, Enius, as much as we love yours, I think it's out of the running. So those are our three. What do you, what do you think, Christine? I don't know, they're all really good, but I think I'm leaning towards Sukkotas. I think so too. Because just the way that you've thought through all of the different states that you can find yourself in, and like the empty state, and then the filled in state, and you have like all this content to go with it, um, and you have all these screens connected together. I think mm -hmm. it's a very compelling prototype that's ready to build. Yep. <laughs> Should build it now. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Sukata. Great work. Uh, really, really nicely done. Yeah. Um, you know, if anyone wants to check out the link, that's kind of the cool thing, and actually give Sakata feedback. Uh, that's up and, and available. Like on again, like you can go follow this this uh, this link and check out Sakata's work yourself and really test it, test it, and play around with it. You can Leave her a comment. This to Behance too, right? And yes, Sakata, you could go and take this and actually embed it into a Behance project as well. You should do that. So there's a link to her work. <laughs> uh, the team here just posted it. Go check it out. Leave her a comment. Give her some feedback. Really nice. All right. Ask, and also, now we'll go back over here to Christine. We have the congratulations to Kata on winning the year of Creative Cloud. We're going to have another mm -hmm. challenge tomorrow um, and the following day. So tune into any of our uh, two hour blocks uh, and you can design along with us and have a chance to win. So, and then, uh, all right. So now, uh, so Christine has continued to sort of work and uh, add some of the different pages, uh, maybe some different views uh, to the beer app, a beer app that we need a name for. <laughs> so uh, we had some great suggestions here uh, in the chat and I, I, I wrote down a few of our favorite and we're going to vote just very informally here with the chat today. Okay, so I'm working from the latest kind of up to it's one of the earliest ones. I think we're gonna do yeah. Here we go. Let's let's give it a go. Ready? Yeah. We had uh, on hop of the world, <laughs> on hop of the world. <laughs> All right. So if you want to vote, you can only vote once. Uh, if you want to vote, just uh, note it in the chat. Just just give it. You know, retype the title as your vote. Uh, so we have on hop of the world. We have hopster. We have fifty shades of beer. <laughs> we have Drafty, very nice, Drafty, Tapster, or we have Globe Hoppers. <laughs> Matthias, Socks. It's <laughs> a catchy name. <laughs> I like it, Socks. Uh, let's see, we got one vote for Brew Hopper, we've got one for Drafty, one for Tapster. Zilla, that wasn't one. <laughs> Drafty. <entry. laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, Tapster, we got a vote for, we got two for Tapster, we got two for Drafty, we've got two Globe Hoppers, three Globe Hoppers, four Globe Hoppers, Taps and we got some Drafty, Drafty's up to like three or four. I don't know who's going to rally here. Who's it going to be, Globe Hoppers or Drafty? On Hop of the World, we got one for a Hop of the World. <laughs> Taps, another for Tapster. I know, Drafty. Drafty's, oh, there's, a, there's one for Globe Hoppers, another one for Globe Hoppers. I'm really, I'm secretly <laughs> pulling keeping, for Globe Hoppers. I don't know. <laughs> keeping track of all these. I'm seeing. <laughs> it's going so fast. <laughs> I don't know. Christine, what are you feeling? I'm going to leave it up to you to, to give the final decision. I think we've we've got Globe Hoppers, Tapster, and On Hop of the World seem to be the top three. I think conceptually Globe Hoppers is the strongest because so. it's tying in like the travel aspect along with the beer aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I really do like Tapster and Drafty, but I worry that it's too beer centric. Too beer centric, um, Which yeah. might work for what we have today, but tomorrow we'll be digging into more of that country aspect. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. beer, what is it? Uh, Globe, Globe Hoppers. Hoppers. Globe, Globe Hoppers. Globe Hoppers is what I'm gonna say. Yeah, kind of like, again, like, that was just kind of perfect, right? Because yeah. like a globe hopper is someone who travels around the world, exactly. uh, and of course hops being the main ingredient in our favorite fermented beverage. Um, I like it. Who right? suggested that? Yeah, who suggested globe hoppers? I don't hand. remember. <laughs> yes, if you're still with us in the chat here. Thank you for the suggestion. That was a great suggestion. Yeah. Yep. Can you get a catchy name? Um, yeah. So. <laughs> smooth Draftzilla <laughs> with Terrence. <laughs> I I uh, I got to meet Terrence actually at oh. Max. He and Zilla. 
their buddies, their colleagues, actually. Cool. So, they're regulars. Those guys are talented peeps. <laughs> uh, looks like, oh, using a little repeat grid. Yeah. Nice. Um, did you drag and drop the country flags? I and, did. Oh, you... So I had a text file with <gasps> all these country flags. Oh my gosh. Um, and then I also had a text file with the countries listed in alphabetical order. That's so good. So I just dragged them into the Dropped repeat grid. Um, and the reason why I decided to go with this view is to consider the mobile experience. Mm -hmm. So on mobile, you know, there aren't hover states. It might be really... Yeah. It's too small of a screen to take yeah. a look at the whole map. Yeah, yeah. So especially if you're on the go, you already know what country you're going to. You mm -hmm. probably just want to search uh, or filter down mm -hmm. a list of countries. Yeah. So you can easily get to it. So that's why I decided to mock this screen up yeah. and see how it feels. Definitely. Um, so I definitely need to. I love the emoji use. The, the, the country flags emoji <laughs> use is amazing. Emoji support. Emoji Shit. support. <laughs> hidden feature. Yeah. It's, it's the quiet, the quiet feature. Uh, that's great. Nice use of the text file too, with the emoji thing. I I hadn't I hadn't thought of that before. Then that, that, that it just like totally flew flowed right into the repeat grid. Yeah. Nice. One thing that I'm wondering though is, um, so you can start to see that like Antigua and Barbados. Yeah. The yeah. the country name is getting. Cut oh off. yeah, yeah. So is there a way to? Well, I guess if you. So you drag out the repeat grid handle. This is definitely a, a, this is definitely a, one of the things we know about repeat grid that we need to actually update. And actually, uh, it's great to always see that and kind of reinforce that. Mm -hmm. So if you drag out the handle, so now uh, do uh, do the column again, yeah, in between the, in the space between the two, uh, yeah, and then drag the repeat the handle on the on the right back to kind of get rid of that second column. Uh, I see. There you go. Sorry, it's Antigua yep. and Barbuda. I don't know. Why I say <laughs> Barbados. My bad. Uh, nice. nice. Cool. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Nice. So too. so tomorrow we'll pick it up and mm -hmm. we'll talk about, like, I like that idea you were talking about that we sketched up earlier about, well, you're on the mobile device. You want to be thinking about the capabilities of this device and how it could influence your app, right? Exactly. So you've got GPS location. So if I'm in Japan, when I open up uh, Globe Hoppers, <laughs> I should be, be kind of, the app should be showing me, like, all the things that I could be, all the beers I could be checking out while I'm here in Japan. And then this might be something that if I yeah if I want to do a search or I want to do like a like go to like a show me all the countries I could possibly go to to kind of you know and keep exploring um, and there's a page like this that could help me do that so yeah and I think yeah. it's important to consider like the whole user journey of how they might use this app yeah so the desktop doesn't have to be um, consistent with the mobile I mean yeah. there should be yeah. like some consistencies but you have yeah. to think about under what context are people going to be using this and cater yeah. it to that. Um, goal, so. I think that's a really good point, and I think early on that was one of the things that you sketched and talked about was that uh, there are different parts of like I might be getting ready to go on a journey versus actually being out there on a journey, or even like after uh, after my journey, and mm -hmm. really considering kind of where the user is, kind of within that kind of end to end experience of traveling, yeah. and really trying to tailor the experience. Uh, of each of the sort of forms, like the, the desktop versus the mobile, like to mapping that to some part, part of that journey, I think is really smart. So something that, again, as, as a UX designer, as a designer, you know, for mobile products and services, you want to be thinking about. And, uh, you know, what's great is that you're able to just quickly kind of get those ideas up and off the ground in XT uh, and move from, again, we moved from a very wireframe, uh, kind of solving some of the skeleton problems of our, of our, of our app now, uh, moving to something more high, high fidelity, uh, utilizing the assets panel, I thought was great. Uh, some of the new features we have in there. Um, excellent. Yeah, and um, one thing that I can also show is, if you publish this, there's this design specs. I know it's in beta. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think this is actually super cool. So if I create this public link. So as a product designer, I work with development mm -hmm. to you know, make sure that the design vision that I set forth is actually realized in the um, the real live instance like the, of the product. Yeah, so yeah. one of um, the aspects of that process is making sure that my screens are ready to hand off. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a really great way to do that. So if I open this link, um, and then I go to a screen. So you can start to see like, that asset panel that I had earlier in Adobe XD is now available here, so the developers can go in and see, oh, where is it being used on mm -hmm. this canvas? Mm -hmm. um, and especially for this screen that's a little more polished, you can see all the colors that are used, 
they can just go in and like copy these styles. Mm -hmm. You see it's already copied. Same thing for the text files. Mm -hmm. um, the image, you can start to see like the spacing in between. Oh, it's like 133 pixels mm -hmm. from um, the left from the edge image, of yeah. the content. Yeah. So this is a really great way to hand off your specs because before I had to go in and manually create these. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so you can share your prototype and really get it out there in front of your stakeholders and get them giving you feedback. Mm -hmm. And then as you you know increase the fidelity and you start using those final assets, when you deliver to your developer, you can you know publish the design spec, and that kind of cuts that uh, that gap of communication down and ensure that they're implementing and developing the right the right thing. Yeah. So it matches the design. Excellent. Great work, Christine. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. This is I, I'm really excited to see where we take it tomorrow. Yeah. So, um, and I really loved what you kind of set up the three days at the start. <laughs> it was really, really nice too. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and remember, there's still going to be a challenge in the next hour uh, with uh, Rovain. Did I say that right? Ravon. Ravon. Ravani. And Paul. Uh, Paul will be back. Uh, and they're going to be designing something cool, I'm sure, in XD. Um, so thanks for joining us. Yeah, keep making great stuff. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly on Twitter. You can hit up, uh, hit up Christine on Twitter as well. Give her, you know, say great job. Uh, maybe she'll share her prototype link out there uh, tomorrow. You can check it out uh, live with us. And uh, yeah, we'll be back 11 to 1 again tomorrow. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah, thanks for joining. Thanks for the great name, Globe Hoppers. <laughs> yes, Globe Hoppers. <laughs>